Hi everyone. Welcome back to Sky Full of Stars, episode 33, where Orihime is having dinner, well actually, instant noodles with Akito. So Akito found Orihime in the club room after sunset, and she'd been there the whole afternoon polishing the mirror that we used for the big telescope that they'll build. So Orihime is quite interested in Akito, given that she learned about his long history doing astronomy with Hikari and Sayo. So Akito presented the notebook that they put together in the past to everyone else in the newly formed Six Stars Club. But anyways, during the conversation, Orihime got reminded of something, and let's see what it is. So, I like this part because we can see that Orihime really wants to learn more about the average people, as opposed to her, so she's the rich girl, and we can tell by how she sees money, so whatever she thinks as being cheap, is not really cheap when an average person looks at it. But anyways, let's continue from here. So that reminds me. So it seemed like she suddenly had an idea. She took out her cell phone and aimed the camera at the noodle cup. So some people take photos of everything, and I guess rich girls are no different. So like, well, even though she's rich, she does have traits that everyone else does. So, let's see. Maybe this was Orihime's way of commemorating the first time eating instant noodles. She put away her phone, still smiling. So I do remember that Orihime was concerned about the instant noodles because, well, I'm sure my mother would not accept this. But I think, it's like, well, maybe I can buy some for my own and hide it in my, in my room. So as she spoke, I felt my own phone vibrate. So... So do you just, um... Okay, so for some reason, Orihime wanted to let everyone know that she's eating instant noodles for the first time, and she sent a photo of that with hashtags on the Six Stars Club message board. What the hell? So do you really have to do that? And plus photo. And he gets all these replies. What they do. Okay, so Honoka's concern was like, wait a minute, this is not Orihime, and why is she still out at night? Okay, so Hikari's jealous, like, so you don't let me in your room at night, but why do you let Orihime in your room? That's kind of unfair. Maybe he likes Orihime better than you. And likewise, Sai is jealous, like, Hey, um, I should come as well. Um, well, that escalated quickly. Well, I couldn't try to deny it. Part of my face was in that photo, and there are all kinds of other hints in the background that give away the location. <laughs> Oh, 
So Orihime continued to write about her first time eating instant noodles. And there's more messages. It was like I was being assaulted by some unseen but relentless enemy. Well, maybe like the publicity that he gets for inviting Orihime to his place. So I switched off the notification on my phone and then turned it over so I couldn't see the screen. So I'm sure the next time he meets those people, they might ask him about it, Seikum. So what are you doing with Orihime in your apartment at that hour? Okay. Arigato. So I wonder what he gave Orihime before he sends her off. <laughs> Or he may spread out the sleeping bag, her ever sparkling. Okay, so her eyes sparkling with delight. As to why she was getting ready to spend the night. Wait, you got you got. Okay, so you gotta be kidding. So my back has a flat tire. Wait, what? Well, couldn't we make a taxi? Or like, call a taxi? Well, I got the feeling that she could afford something like this. Ooh, so I kinda like how Orihime has supportive parents. So, when she's out too late, when she makes arrangements, they're like, okay, well, that's okay, that's all right. And I wonder what's gonna happen about. Well, never mind. So, your mom is pretty laid back, huh? So, I was not expecting that. <laughs> So if you remember, it was Orihime's mom that inspired her to do astronomy. So it's like, well, if you're out late because of astronomy, that's acceptable because I want you to be immersed in this more than worrying about all the other things. Okay, that makes sense. There you go. Well, then again, stargazing wasn't the reason Orihime was away from home tonight, but they can do it while Orihime is here for the night. But it looked like she was spending the night in my room whether I wanted her to do so or not. Well, I guess it's okay. I haven't looked at my phone since the noodle photo, so I'm pretty sure there's more angry messages about Akito, once he flips up that phone. It's like, oh, I'm jealous. Why do you have Orihime in the room? Why not me? And... Yumi kicked me out. But I'd probably be bombarded with even more messages if anyone found out about this. Well, it's pretty late, so... Feel free to turn in. So I'm gonna work on this a little bit more. Okay, so it's like, well, um, if you're tired, you can go ahead and sleep here. I'm just going to work on that mirror a little bit more. Try to get as much as I can before I go to sleep. So I picked up the Ancient One's Evil Eye, examining the curve of the surface. There you go. I want to get it done as soon as I can. As I sat down to begin work, Orihime regarded me quizzically. So, why? The one question, why? Uh, well, 
Yeah, you can say there is um. Ooh, so Orhim is smart. She can sense that it must have been something, and it's probably related to Hikari. So what makes you think that? So how do you know? She had caught me off guard, so I got a little defensive. Ooh, so good observations. So Orihime can sense like, well, the only reason you started moving forward was because Hikari came back. So when you are rushing this, it must have something to do with Hikari. Um, well, she saw right through me. So Hikari is moving overseas at the end of the winter vacation. So he tells Orihime the truth. So the Dobsonians first light could be the last chance I have to go stargazing with her. But only if we can finish this in time. Well sorry. I didn't need Let's see. So I didn't need to bring personal issues into this. Well, I guess everyone has their own reasons and whatnot. Okay. So Hikari's leaving? So must hurry then. So even as she spoke, Orihime was struggling to keep her eyes open. She looked like she was just about to fall asleep. So please go ahead and sleep. Sorry. The lights are still on. But I'm not asleep yet, so... No, 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 um, you can go to bed. Just get into your sleeping bag. You'll catch a cold otherwise. So he may mumble some half-hearted protestations. But climbed into the sleeping bag, none of the less. Okay. So she goes to sleep. That was quick. So the sounds of deep but refined breathing were already coming from the sleeping bag. Oh, so she completely let her guard down, too. Well, maybe I did have some kind of special powers that made girls feel completely safe around me. Well, either that or my masculine charm is non-existent. So the simple repetitive work of standing in this mirror was enough to keep me awake a little bit longer. So I wonder when Akito eventually did go to sleep. Okay, so I hope he didn't pull an all-nighter just to sand and shape the mirror down. But let's see what happens. Okay, so I think he's doing the all-nighter. Oh, I can't keep this up. I am so sick of sanding. Wait, a dream? Oh, so you had a nightmare about sanding the mirror forever. 
I'd even start working on the mirror in my dreams. I could almost hear that scratching sound now. Wait a minute. The noise wasn't from a dream. Okay, so it looks like Orihime got up first and she helped Akito continue to stay in the mirror. So I nearly jumped out of my skin as I grabbed the blanket I've been using and covered myself. Wait, Orihime, wh wh why are you... Wait, my bed. So last night, did Orihime and I, um... No, she actually seemed to be completely absorbed in seeing the mirror. And that's not something you'd be doing this morning after an indiscreet night. Alright, so we both just slept here. Well then again, that can be misinterpreted somehow. But anyways, good morning. Oh, well, morning. Um, so I guess you went back to work after you got me up. Huh? Or like you got up. Ah, uh, no, it's fine. Um, I did have some weird dreams though. Well, ever since I started sanding that mirror, I couldn't get away from that damn scratching sound. It echoed across the inside of my head even when I slept. Well, more importantly, I hope you haven't been depriving yourself of sleep just to get more work done. So, at least make sure your health is alright, Orihime. Well, don't worry. I slept well, so... Well, I do want to see the stars with, Hik with Hikari before she leaves, so... I'm in the same boat as you. So Orihime returned to her task with renewed enthusiasm. Okay, so if you take the quarter pass bus, you should be able to get to the Mako Academy on time. So after washing and putting together a quick breakfast, I saw Orihime, or I sent Orihime to the bus stop outside of the school gates. Well, I'm glad you joined yourself, but don't make it a habit of it. You'll make everyone worry. Well, don't worry. I'm the oldest and I can make my decisions. She gave a short laugh. Well, at least she was aware of some of her shortcomings. And I felt the smile spreading to my own face. And when I looked at my phone earlier, I had several unread messages. So I wonder what the messages are saying now. Well, just imagining what they might say filled me with dread. But soon enough, the bus arrived. Well, I'm pretty sure even if Akito avoids the messages, he's going to face all those people eventually, so there's no point at evading them. Yeah. Or he may give me another of her winning smiles. So see you later. Okay, see you. So the doors closed behind her and the bus drove off. And after watching it go, I started walking. 
Okay, so better go back to work. My bike was out of commission, so I had to go on foot. And I wonder if he has enough money to have the bicycle fixed. Well, I'll probably run into Saya buying lunch and have to explain what happened last night. Okay, let's see if that's happening. So let's see if that's going to happen next. So I plod along the early morning road, trying out excuses in my head. So he's trying to come up with some explanation about why he was with Orihime last night. Okay, so before we get into that, it looks like we have went back into the past with them as little kids. So it was the last day of our second semester for sixth grade. みんないいですか冬休みだからってくれぐれも危ない真似はしないように。危ないことってどんなことですか？そうですね。I'm pretty sure Mihara was pointing out to Akito, or like she's calling out on Akito because Akito did it as a dare because he lost a bet with the bully Takeichi over that Alberio Stars. <laughs> Really? But I do remember that from a year ago. Well, it wasn't me, so, uh. So what's wrong then? But I didn't do anything wrong. It was the Akito boy. Blame him. It's like, wait, and stop being the teacher's pet. So Takeichi and Hikari's back and forth always made the whole class laugh. And I'm sure Miharu does remember it very well because when she saw Akito in the rivers, she panicked, she quickly grabbed Akito from the rivers and soaked him in a bathtub at her parents' place. It's like, that was dangerous, you could have gotten sick from that cold river water, so you can stay here until you warm up to the right temperature. So Tatsumi Sensei gave a dirty, a dry smile as her fingers as he massaged a certain spot on the back of her head. And she did that a lot back then. Well, I'm wondering if that was a precursor to why Miharu eventually quit teaching. Because she might have been trying to feel like her hair trying to check how much hair she lost from all the stress related to teaching. So what is the corona? Wait, shop? Oh no, oh, chop. I guess. Wait, Hikari? So what's wrong? So after Satomi Sensei wrapped things up with the class meeting, Hikari had dashed out of the classroom before anyone else. And I caught up with her just outside of the school gates. So we're going. 
早く帰ろうと思って。Hikari had been acting weird all morning. She wasn't her usual friendly self, and it seemed like she had something on her mind. Okay, so let's walk back together. So, what's going on? Hey, um, wait a minute. So, how about tonight?、Um, not that we're on vacation, we can all stargaze all night. <laughs> well, I want to join, says Corona.、Oh. But looks like there's something that's bothering Hikari and she can't join. Wait, Hikari? <laughs> well, okay, so I can't join, but at least you have Saya. So, you're not coming?、Mm. No thanks. But we've been looking forward to winter vacation for ages. So, we hardly talked about anything else except how much fun it would be to stay out and watch the stars until morning. And Ikari had been the most enthusiastic of them all. So, what's wrong with you today? Did you eat, did you eat anything weird? It sounded like a joke, but at the same time, I was serious. And I thought maybe she'd gotten poisoned by a strange mushroom or something. Well, then again, they're kids, so. Why else would Hikari talk like this? But then. I'm bored. So. I don't know if Hikari was really telling the truth or she was lying, trying to cover up the real problem that she's facing. I got bored. Hey, wait. Wait a minute, Hikari. So Corona cast a. Let's see. Hair glance at me and then Hikari. And went after Hikari. Wait, so what's up with her? It's like, that's unusual. Why would Hikari suddenly just mention that she got bored? So, na- unable to fathom her behavior, all I could do was watch Hikari feign to distance. Followed by Corona. Um, so, Sai looked around for our friend. So, she says she got bored of us. She said that she's done with stargazing. w e l I had no idea what was going on. And where all this had come from. Well, I guess、uh, she's always been the type to get bored quickly. She was constantly moving from one activity to another. But still, it was all too sudden. And the main reason we've been s t a r k i n g so much was to stop Kikari from moving away so the three of us could stay together. But I couldn't just leave it alone. I had to find out the reason for Hikari's change in attitude. So, obviously, Hikari or Akito can sense that. Wait a minute, that's not right. That, that's not Hikari. So, when she mentioned that she got bored of stargazing, it really seemed like she was trying to cover up the real reason why she doesn't want to stargaze tonight with Akito and Saya. Okay, so we're back in present times, and I think we skipped over all the explanation that Akito has to give to all the girls about 
his little night with Orihime. And for some reason, this old man champ is here. And the last time we saw him was in the beginning when he was trying to buy some stuff from the Saotome convenience store. So the little old man carefully examined the curve of the glass I've been sanding. Okay, so he cries here as well. Hey, don't call him that to his face. I sense Hikari with a quick elbow jab. So, why is he interested in the glass? But yeah, this was the old guy we call Omian Champ. Oh yeah, I do know him. So if you remember from that time at the convenience store, he bought some really inappropriate porn magazine. And he bought another magazine to hide on top of it. And obviously, Akito knows about it, but chooses not to call out on it. And I do remember one visual novel that I haven't played yet, where the main character's classmate called him out on it and then he had to come up with some legitimate excuse to justify why he's buying that and it's not for him so it's like well I bought this for someone else huh? well I told Hikari about him when she was still using her Kamako persona Okay, yeah, the um, sorry old man champ can't came by message. Hey, guys, he's gonna hear you, so keep your voices down. Okay, and Orihime is here for some reason. So Orihime must have overheard what Hikari said, and she sounded worried. Well, it should be fine. I'm pretty sure his skills are the real deal. So call him an instructor was going a little bit too far, but Champ was the one who had taught me about sanding and polishing mirrors. So I was like, well, maybe he can share some of his expertise with us to get this mirror all perfected. Well, he used to work in glass manufacturing industries, so he knows what he's talking about. And as for how I ended up learning from him, we have to go back to last week. Well, that's the plan. Looking at the donations we've got so far, it doesn't seem like we'll be able to buy a ready-made one. And plus, Orihime and the others said that they prefer if we could make everything ourselves if we can. Well, I'm sure that idea was brought up by Hikari and Saya, and pretty much everyone just agreed to it. Because if it was Orihime, she'd probably just have everyone buy new commercially made products. Because we know that Orihime doesn't really have an idea about how much money is too much. Our goal wasn't to create a really high performance telescope. It was more about learning firsthand what was required to make one, what were the different parts, or what the different parts did and how they came together. So learning how to do it from a book will be hard, though. Yeah, that's true. It's like, well, the book can explain how it's done. It can give some numbers on what's good. It can even show pictures on how to measure it to determine if it's a good mirror. But 
it's still better if you go hands on and actually try to polish the mirror and see for yourself. Yeah, that's true. Well, let me introduce you to someone who can help you. Really? You know someone like that? I jumped at the offer. It sounded too good to be true. So, it kind of sounds like, well, I'm the expert. So, let Mihara Sensei help you then. But it's. It isn't the size that you're looking at. So. Well, I guess a project like this wouldn't be out of character for the old Six Stars Club. Well, you gotta introduce me. So, where do they live? Here? Huh? Wait, it means you? <laughs> okay, so, well, I'm not the perfect person to teach you how to work with glass, but there's someone nearby that can introduce to you. So, who might that person be? It's right here means inside the store, and there was only one other person it could be. The old man. So, who was shying away from buying his dirty magazines while Miharu Mihar san was at the register? Hi, hey, you, Gramps. She beckoned to Old Man Champ, but he pretended he had a, he hadn't heard and continued to stare at the magazine rack. Well, why don't you go ask him? He doesn't want to come over here. Mihara-san gave me an encouraging pat on the shoulder, then disappeared into the back of the store. A few minutes later, Old Man Champ came up to the register. And just like always, he chosen a journey magazine after much deliberation and hid it under a copy of Champ Comics. So the same usual routine. So what can I do for you? Um Okay, so similar to Yen. Hmm. One thousand yen, so that'll be a two hundred yen change. But first So what is it? So would you mind if I asked you for a favor? So after some negotiations, I agreed to Old Man Champ's terms, and he taught me how to polish the mirror. So there's one thing we haven't really heard a word come out from Old Man Chan's, Champ's mouth. All he's been doing is mm hum, just all these voices. Um, well, he was a glass craftsman that lived in the Mikazuki village. But he retired when the dam was built. Well, it's like... Well, that's true, but, um... So according to Mihara-san, this era used to be a real astronomy hotspot. So he, he started grinding mirrors for reflective telescopes after a friend commissioned him for work. So while he wasn't technically an expert in lenses or of astronomy or astronomy, he made plenty of objective mirrors in his time. And apparently he really liked the idea 
of glass he worked on being used to look at the stars. So, I'm pretty sure most lenses are made of glass. There are some plastic ones. And maybe some that are made of special material. And... So what makes a lens is that the glass is polished and sanded and shaped to exact specs so that it can refract light in certain directions or reflect them like a mirror. And by having the lens shaped correctly, light will refract or reflect in the right places and you see the focus light that generates an image. So Omi and Champ look like he had something to say. So what do you think? I lean in closer, keeping a wary eye on the girls. Champ whispered to me, let's see, conspirationally, or conspiratorially. Okay, so like, well, you're doing a good job, so just keep doing what you're doing and, um... Oh, thank you. So, the old man really was shy around young girls. Well, it's his fault for reading all those magazines. Which seemed to include both my friends. And, our, and my former teacher. I guess his idea of youth was a little different from mine. As was his passion for those magazines. Well, leave it to me. I already found a place online. All that's left is to place the order and uh, wait. So I wonder if they're talking about magazines and how some of them got back ordered and Akito has to go and find it online for him. Well, I made some extra okay, so I made extra sure not to let any of the girls hear that part. But then again, it gets the curiosity of or Hime, Hikari, and Saya. Who knows? So they worked out our own secret deal. It's like, well, um, so you give us advice on how to polish this mirror, and in exchange, I'll let you order the things that you want, even if it's not available in our sh in our store, and I have to go online and back order it. So my part of the bargain was to get the old man some of his favorite magazines from an online dealer. There you go. And there were some vintage publications with a real retro feel about then. For Champ, they took him right back to his younger days. Okay, so it's like, okay, so it's not those um dirty magazines, but it's like vintage magazines. And I wonder how much they cost. But I'm pretty sure he is able to afford them. So apparently, he was shy in real life and no good with co computers or the internet. Our store was maybe the only place he could get what he was looking for. Well, that's true. No problem. So in return, he was not only teaching me how to sand polish the mirror, but also lending me some old tools or like his old tools well that was the easy part but you know with you around it'll help me buy those things that I can't order because I don't know how to use the computer Okay, enough for that talk. Okay, 
Uh, say, sir. Well, I hope you keep coming by, and you can count on my discretion. Ah, sincere story. Hmm. So, what is Akito talking about with this person? And I'm pretty sure Hikari's the one that's most jealous of, or most suspicious of Akito, given that he has been shutting Hikari away from a lot of things recently, and this is the latest one. So, having a private talk with the old man guy. So, with my absence. It looks like Akito has made connections with other people, and they're so good that I'm not allowed to chime in on it. So we continue to make progress on the mirror. So after Old Man Champ left, we all took turns seeing it. So I wonder how much work they still have left before they can move on to the next step and eventually get it installed. So the surface of the glass gradually gave way to our surface, or like um, our efforts. And after this, we be sanding with a finer abrasive to get the surface nice and smooth. And according to Champ, we were nearly ready to move on to that stage. This is hard. Well, more or less. I had a lot of free time after school and before bed, not to mention my lunch break during the day. Well, I wouldn't want to run out of time though. So, Car flashed me a smile and returned to her work. Um, right. So it's time for me to go to work. Okay? Oh, so time has passed quickly. Um, I'm sorry. I know it's a pain coming all the way out here. Or it's a pain for all you girls to come out here. Wait, I live close? So Hikari School Amahai was right on the southern boundary of the city, and the train journey took over 45 minutes each way. And although that was much faster than it used to be. And well, I don't know how her parents feel if Hikari decides to go home late. Or sleep over. So Sai took the lead in getting the room back in order. Orihime got up to join her, and meanwhile Hikari left to wash her hands. So what's the problem? So what's up? So Ikari silently held out her hand. Okay, I want that back. So what? Well, I'm pretty sure what you know. Like, I'm pretty sure you know what it is, and I'm pretty sure what we know, or we know what this is. Uh. Well, that's a Hikari problem, not an Akito problem. She sounded more determined than ever. Well, whatever was in that letter, she did not want me finding out. Well, I hope Akito reads the letter sooner, because if Hikari finds it, it's over, and there'll be no way of. Akito being able to read that letter. 
So, what was I going to do now? Okay, so we get a decision. We get to decide whether or not A, we're going to tell Hikari, well, I'm not going to give it to you. I'm going to hold it. Or B, just give it back to Hikari and let her take care of it, which may include having it destroyed. So, I'm going to go ahead and stop here for this episode because it's going to take a while for me to go through both choices. But I don't think this choice will allow... Or like this choice decides... Or is one of the factors that decide which route we'll be on at the end of the common route. So anyways... I wonder how much work they have left to get the mirror polished and ready to go, even after getting some expert advice from the old man champ. But obviously there are more stages involved once that mirror is ready because they still have to build the rest of the assembly, like the tube, the eyepiece, the maybe the smaller mirror, the stand, and they have to find the right time to do the actual activity. So we'll see what happens with these two options and how it continues from here. So with that in mind, I'll see you in the next episode.